Ashley, there has got to be an easier way. There certainly is with a drill. Okay, let's do it. On the right setting. Oh, the wood split. <laughs> I guess today on the Warrior Woodshop, we're gonna learn how to prevent this. we're going to talk about different kinds of ways to connect material together. I've got with me two of our hard-working front office secretaries. I've got Ms. Schumacher, Ms. Anderson. What would you say your guys' experience levels are? I'm a beginner, but I've done some work. Zero. Zero? <laughs> Zero. It's 2020. I want to give a shout out to all of the building secretaries all over the district. They have been through a lot and they started way before we did so thank you for all you guys have done i guess we got a little guest star today <laughs> one of the uh ways beginners start out a project is simply just butting two pieces of wood together and they think hey let's glue it together the problem with a glue joint on an end grain is it soaks up like a sponge that was glued overnight so we've got to figure out a way to reinforce that and that could be done where most people go to what do you think the most common ways to reinforce that joint would be what would you add to it a screw a screw or a nail, or a nail. screws are definitely the strongest of those two but with a screw then you've got the unsightly the head to hide so we're going to show how to get the strength of a screw but yet make it still attractive for a beginner project. For those that don't know, wood is technically not a solid material. We say solid wood, but it's not solid. It's actually a bunch of fibers woven together. So the best way to describe it would be like a block of rope, okay, a square rope. So before you go picking up the screw at the hardware store, you need to know what kind of, are you working with a harder wood or a softer wood? That can easily be determined by the weight a lot of times. A heavier board, more fibers lighter the board like pine like we're using today we're going to use what's called a coarse thread screw the the threads on the screw are a little bit bigger and further apart for cherry and walnut the court the threads are a little smaller that's because there's less room for the threads to expand so you've got to have a smaller bite basically i mean you can tell the threads are different yeah on so, these screws, you, so it depends on what so which one would be a decking screw because like i've heard the word decking screw it actually depends on your type of decking I'm sorry to give you a broad answer. If you're using the traditional pine, mm -hmm. you're going to use a coarse thread screw. Mm -hmm. yep. If you're using some of the newer materials like composite, mm -hmm. everything's packed a little tighter because of the, the way it's manufactured. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're going to go to a fine thread. Okay. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. I mean, it does make a difference because I've used it before and it's like you literally cannot get the screw through, but then you change the screw and it, it's like paper. We saw in the intro that a little bit hard to get the screw in there when you don't have any help. So if we remove some of those fibers with a drill and a drill bit, it should make it go a lot easier. This is what we call a pilot bolt. Would you mind picking a spot there on the end and drilling all the way through? Leave it right and pull back out. All right, okay, looks good. Now remember from the drill unit, if the back side is going to show, you want to have a scrap board underneath it. But in this case, it's not going to show that little splintering right there. So let's, let's do it this way. I'm going to give it a your screwdriver a go again and see if that makes life a little bit easier. Oh my gosh, so much easier. <laughs> Another little tip or trick, especially on like cherry and walnut, rub the screw on a bar of soap. That actually, that wax makes it go in a little bit of pine. Wow. A lot of times you can get away with it. Amazing. Now, the size of the hole needs to be appropriate for the screw. If mm -hmm. the hole's too large, the screw's not going to bite. Too small, mm -hmm. it's going to still split. So there's a lot of charts out there on the internet. Sometimes they're even on the backs of boxes of the screws. They'll tell you what size hole to drill. 
Hopefully by now you realize the importance of pre-drilling before you insert a screw. This is the first of our three-part series on butt joints and how to reinforce them with screws. So be sure to like, subscribe, check out the other couple videos we've got on counter boring and counter sinking. So again, be sure to like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Go out and make some sawdust.